In this video, I'm going to look at the pros and cons of using projector lenses on digital cameras and talk about different ways you can adapt lenses to your camera, ranging from quite sophisticated solutions to options that require no skill whatsoever. There are a lot more users of these lenses out there today, and much more information than was available when I started to use them myself. There's been quite a significant increase in prices for some of the more popular lenses, to the point where it's relevant to ask, are they really worth the costs and the hassle? So I thought it might be helpful to share my experiences and advice, in case you have an interest in trying out a projector lens. And I'll begin with a few words about not only the joys, but also the drawbacks of using these lenses. The fact is, some projector lenses can take really lovely photographs. The best ones are sharp and produce beautiful colours and bouquet. With the right adapter, they're close focusing, and as many of the lenses are in the 80mm to mid-telephoto range, you can use their very narrow depth of field to great effect. It's like a supercharged macro lens. And the bouquet can be sublime, very painterly, with wonderful smooth blur and excellent bouquet balls, all helped by a slight translucent glow that many of the lenses produce. Because they lack the kind of coatings that conventional lenses have, coatings designed to deal with light leaks and flares. They can also be a fun substitute to using much more expensive, famous lenses from the same manufacturers. To take a couple of examples, you can buy a Leitz projector lens like this one, i.e. a lens designed and made by Leica in Germany, at a fraction of the cost of a Leica camera lens. Or you could buy one of these little lenses made by Mare Optic Gerlis, or later by Pentagon. Lenses that will give you the same kind of soap bubble bouquet, the much more costly Mare Optic Gerlis Trio plans. The most obvious downside of using projector lenses is that you need to find a good way of adapting each lens to your digital camera. And it's not always possible to get the lenses to focus to infinity. Indeed, you may find it hard to get some lens adapter combinations to even cover a human head, so it'll be close focusing only. And you won't have any control over the aperture size. It's wide open only, unless you find a way to narrow the aperture, which can be done, as I'll explain later. Before going through the options for adapting projector lenses, I'd like to share a few words of advice and guidelines for buying and adapting these lenses. Starting with the most obvious point, that it's critical to select the right lens to adapt. And by the right lens, I mean a lens that performs well optically, and it's a size and shape that can easily be adapted to your digital camera. There are many different varieties and sizes of projector lenses. Some are rare and expensive, with very high quality metal bodies and glass. Some are cheap to buy with plastic bodies and low quality optics. In terms of optics, it's a voyage of discovery, looking through other people's photos with different projector lenses, to find the lens that produces the kind of images you like. You'll see lenses that produce extremely soft images, seriously lacking in colour contrast. You'll see lenses that appear to deliver sharp, colourful and contrasty images, and some fascinating and beautiful rendering. And you'll see loads of images that have been through a lot of post-processing, but that's to be expected these days. Then it's a matter of looking at the size of the lens itself. How big is the lens body, and how wide is it at the front and the back? In terms of choosing specific lenses, I've learned the hard way that it's best to concentrate on lenses that others have used successfully. I purchased lenses I've never seen used by others, and some of them have been unusable or terrible. Now when you get a lens, you need to try and use an adapter that positions the lens as close to your camera's sensor as possible. Clearly not right up against the sensor, but if you look at most projector lenses, their rear element is recessed into the lens body, unlike conventional lenses. So the closer you can get the lens to the sensor, the further away you can focus the lens. You need to avoid light leaks. With some adapter options, the lens won't fit perfectly, so it's important to make sure there are no light leaks. It helps to be able to adjust the focus of the lens, either using the adapter itself, or simply by moving the lens in and out of the adapter. At the same time, you need to keep the lens secure, so it won't come loose and fall off the adapter while you're walking around with it, something that's happened to me. Now on to different options for adapting projector lenses to digital cameras. I'm going to cover six different options I've tried. If you used other and perhaps better ways, please tell us in the comments below. The first option is to buy a projector lens from someone who's already made an adapter for attaching the specific lens to a specific lens mount. I can show you one relatively simple way to make such an adapter for this Mare Optic Gerlitz lens. I bought the lens with the attachment that fitted the lens to the projector itself. The lens moves in and out of the attachment and is pretty secure. 
All I need to do is to glue the attachment to a camera lens adapter and then make sure there are no light leaks around the edges. On internet sales sites, you'll also find people selling specific lenses with custom made adapters. Some of them are very well engineered. The second option for adapting projector lenses is to use a set of bellows that attaches to your camera. As long as you measure the size of your lens and the size of the front of the bellows accurately to make sure they'll fit, it's a straightforward and easy solution. But it's a solution best suited to close-up and macro shots. To prevent light leaks and keep the lens secure, you may need to put something around the body of the lens. I've used a variety of materials to do this, including cardboard, paper, masking tape, foam, and even blue tack. It depends on what you've got. I've also found the kind of felt-like tape you use on tennis racket handles works well, because the felt has a slight grip that stops the lenses from falling out. On these bellows, I take the front ring out, and as you can see, this light's lens fits perfectly into the bellows. No need for any extra material. Bellows are a very clunky and cumbersome option for taking lenses for walks outside, but inside, or close to home, the combination works very well. They'll give you different focusing distances, but nowhere near infinity focus. Testing these bellows with a silver made in Germany Light's 90mm lens, I can focus as close as around 10cm from the end of the lens, but only as far out as around 40cm. I have in fact taken the bellows for walks around public gardens to shoot flowers and insects and other small objects with some strange looks, but also with some excellent results. The third option is to use extension tubes. You may find these tubes are too narrow for many projector lenses. However, for this smaller Mare Optic Girl it's 80mm, they're a good size once you've secured the lens inside the tube. Just a piece of cardboard does the job here, and you can move the lens in and out. Indeed, when I put the extension tube on this Sony E-mount M42 adapter, it gives me quite a lot of movement towards the sensor. And the focusing distance reaches infinity, actually well past infinity. I prefer using the combination of the tube on the adapter rather than simply using the adapter only, as it keeps the lens away from touching the sensor. And here's an image taken at what a conventional lens would treat as infinity. Zooming in, the details are not great, but they're not terrible either. Closer up, the lens performs well, and you certainly get that bubble bouquet look with the images with the right lighting. There are different versions of the Mare Optic Gurlitz and later Pentagon projector lenses. With the 80mm lens, there's an f3.5 version and an f2.8 version. I've got the f3.5. You might get even better bubbles with the 2.8. And there are different focal lengths, so a variety of projector lenses to investigate and choose from this manufacturer. The fourth option is to buy an adjustable helisoid like this one. It's a helisoid with an M42 screw mount. I then screw it into another adapter to fit on my digital cameras. At the front end, the size is larger than M42. You can get an M52 or an M58, for instance. This one is an M52, so you can fit the lens of your choice into the gap. It'll fit a number of different projector lenses into the front, so it's very flexible. And it works well, as long as you make sure the lenses are secured with no light leaks. My own personal favourite lens is a Lights Colorplan 90f2.5. You've already seen the silver version made in Germany, but this one was made in Portugal. And it fits into the helisoid, secured with this piece of foam packing. The big downside with using this particular lens on the helisoid is that you don't get anywhere near infinity focus. The longest distance this combination will focus to is around 80 centimetres, or under 3 feet and the minimum focusing distance is around 35 centimetres, or over a foot. I'm not overly fussed with a lack of infinity focus, but I would like to have an arrangement with this particular lens where I could use the lens for wider angled head and shoulders portraits. Never mind, between one and three feet, these lights lenses have taken some lovely, sharp, colourful closer focus images, including closer up portraits. That's for the lights colour plan 90mm lenses. I've not tried the lights lenses at other focal lengths, so perhaps if you have, you could comment on performance and focusing distances below. However, I do use other projector lenses on the helisoid, and they do focus to infinity. 
I'll show you the results from two of the lenses. These lenses weren't chosen from any detailed research. The Hanamar came off a of family slide projector I had, and the Heidosmat came with the Lights Color Plan I bought. The interesting and informative thing about these lenses is that they both have the same sized end barrel as the Lights's. So it's not simply the helisoid that's causing the short focusing distance of the Lights's. It must be the design configuration of the Lights lens itself, compared to these other two lenses. Something to bear in mind when buying projector lenses. These particular lenses don't perform very well at infinity. I wouldn't use them as a walk around landscape lens, but at least you have the option to extend the focusing distance if you want, for portraits, for example. The fifth and most sophisticated option involves using a conventional lens body to hold and operate the lens. If you get this right, you'll be able to use the aperture blades in the lens body. Here's part of an old lens, and you can see that the aperture blades are built into the body and still work perfectly. If you have a projector lens of the right size that fits into the lens body, and it has to be one of the smaller designs, then you can adapt the lens, focusing, and aperture mechanisms to fit onto your camera. This option is a great solution if you have the materials and the skills to complete the build. Finally, if you don't have or you don't want to use extension tubes, helisoids, bellows or old lens bodies, there is one other way of fixing the lens to your camera. What you need to do is to find a tube made of cardboard, plastic or metal of a suitable size. A strong tube is ideal, but for this demonstration, I'm going to use rolls of toilet paper. It's very crude, but it works if you're looking for a rough and ready solution, and it has one other advantage, as I'll explain in a moment. If necessary, cut the cardboard to the length of the lens, and to a size that fits snugly around the barrel of the lens. Because the cardboard isn't very strong, it's worth using two rolls. I don't fix the lens to the cardboard, I tape the cardboard together with sellotape, so I can move the lens in and out. One danger of this approach is that the lens may not be very secure, so you have to be careful it doesn't fall off while you're walking around. It's not so safe to use with the heavier metal lenses, like the silver made in Germany Leitzes, for example. Then you need to attach the cardboard to either your camera directly, or fit it into an adapter on the camera. I prefer to use an adapter, because then you can take the whole thing on and off your camera, rather than sticking tape directly onto the camera. And this combination fits quite easily into my Sony E-mount adapter. Of course, you'll have to measure the size of any projector lens and adapter you choose to use. You could also buy a more robust tube from a hardware shop. But whatever solution you find, one important benefit is that it extends the maximum focusing distance for most of my lenses to over 7 foot. And that means I can take head and shoulders portraits, something that these lenses are rather good at doing. And finally, a few words about aperture sizes. I mentioned at the start that these lenses are for wide open photography only. Well, that's not strictly true, as we've seen, because you can adapt some of these lenses into an old lens body and use that lens's aperture blades. And there's a much simpler solution, which is to make or buy your own disc that closes the size of the aperture. You could cut a hole in a round piece of black cardboard, or you could buy a black rubber washer and cut its outer edges down to size if necessary. Then you insert the cardboard or washer into the back of the projector lenses. There's enough space to do this in most lenses. In conclusion, I'd like to reiterate the point I made at the beginning, that the most popular projector lenses, i.e. the famous brand name versions that people find work well on digital cameras, are not always very cheap. You have to be careful what you buy and understand the kinds of image effects you want, because there may be perfectly good conventional lenses that can do the same thing. For instance, there are some quite costly projector lenses that are promoted online on the basis that they produce soap bubble bouquet. But at today's prices, if soap bubble bouquet is what you're after, you may be able to find cheaper conventional old triplet design lenses that can also produce the same kinds of effects. And as we've seen, you need to make sure you have a solution for adapting the lenses that deliver what you want, especially in terms of focusing distances. It's fair to say that not everyone who has purchased highly regarded projector lenses have been impressed with the results. Some people find the images too soft and lacking in contrast, no better and sometimes worse than a very soft conventional fast 50 type lens wide open. I think it all comes down to expectations and personal taste. My own view is that adapting these lenses to my digital cameras is an interesting and fun challenge in its own right, and I can generally live with any softness or lack of contrast. Indeed, I welcome the challenge of finding compositions that suit each lens's strengths and weaknesses. 
I certainly need to try harder with these lenses than I do with conventional lenses, so they keep me amused and they help to reignite my interest in photography. If the results are soft and glowing, and sometimes they are, well maybe the rendering actually adds to the artistic and unique nature of the images. I know there are some really sophisticated projector lens users out there, and I hope you'll enlighten us on your approaches to adapting lenses, and also tell us about your favourite projector lenses. So that's it, I hope you found this video helpful and interesting. Until the next time, I'd like to send everyone my best wishes, and stay safe.